Hey gang. So some of you will know that uh, I have been a fan of uh, Lock and Load and Lock and Load Publishing as it's now called for a long time. I've enjoyed the squad level game and the platoon level game. Uh, World of War uh, is their platoon level game and Lock and Load is their squad level game. And you know, for all the various reasons, for all the things that went wrong with the sale of the company and the uh, handing over of ownership and the promises of uh, new things to come and better stuff and better printing and more consistency and all the things, right? All the stuff. Uh, I had bought into their BS uh, pretty, pretty openly and honestly because I believe that you should give everybody a fair chance to get it right, right? And I think those of you that follow this channel, the big board or the blog or whatever, will know that over the last six or eight months, you probably haven't seen me saying very much about lock and load publishing unless it's been either mildly critical or just generally no comment, right? How <laughs> I play a game and that's about it. So, so today, uh, we're going to have a look at this. This just came in the mail and I have not, I, this is not a game that I ordered. Uh, David Heath was you're very generous and sent me a copy of this game to review and I, well, not even to review he just sent it to me no email no telephone call he, he may have called and I didn't recall uh, didn't call back uh, just because hey I didn't right uh, there was lots of shit going around on BGG again with you know the usual trolls being jerks and the usual folks being jerks back to the trolls so I bailed out of that conversation. So I assumed that the telephone call was about that. Well, in fact, the telephone call may have been about this. So Dawn's Early Light, Red Hammer, uh, is a, not an expansion, but it's, I guess, the second volume. Or maybe maybe it's a re reprint. I don't know. I actually haven't looked online to see exactly what it is. I do know that this is, this is a full edition of the game. Right? Uh, and this is the core command system, so it's set at a fairly a much higher level, but it has that similar fast play that Walker has been known for. Uh, and this uh, and this game was actually designed uh, by Pete Bognazarian, who I've met and played some games with. And Pete's a cool guy. And this is a great little system from the from what I've seen of it being played. Here you go. Yeah. So Totten's Tug. Uh, you probably can't see that because of the glare. Totten's Tug was the first module I believe and so what is this so it's everything from dawn's early light with improved counters plus expansion game high noon at Gersenberg all right so basically this is a reprint plus is what I'm gonna call it so let's have a look at it and see now keep in mind we've had issues with counters and Let's see what we find. I pulled the shrink off this about 30 seconds ago and I was gonna go through it all and I thought, you know what? Let's just check it out and get first gut reaction and take it from there. First gut reaction is this is a freaking awesome box. It's beautiful artwork on this box. It looks really good. It is very slender. I'm not sure how many units are in here. How many units are in here? Do -de -do -de -do -do. One and a half counter sheets, 176. So it's not a big game. You're not putting a counter tray in this, but that doesn't matter, you put baggies, right? So, uh, okay, looks like that's not good down probably, but that's not a big deal. So, color cover for the manual. Ooh, and full color. All right, full color for the rule book. Really nice layout, big font, very easy to read. I can even read it from this distance, which is saying something. And as you can see, this is not a very long set of rules. It's eight pages of rules. And I would, you know, on a typical rule book, this would probably be four. So this is a, I know this is a tight system. But I haven't played it, but my buddies have, the guys that I play World of War with and Lock and Low with, and they, they really do enjoy this system. So, so full reprint. Three, five, seven scenarios. And this is not high gloss paper, but it's kind of a medium gloss and it's a nice weight to it. All right, so that's pretty pretty slick. Player aid card. And for all the guys that bitch and moan about, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> the lock and load stuff, let's see. Uh, 
Yes, so we have descriptions of the counters and what they do, guys. So you can be happy with that, all right? Uh, we have a terrain key. We have the different types of units and what they are. Asset chit summary. Orders, DRMs, terrain chart, yada, yada, yada. Whoa, what is this? Catalog, well, this would be interesting. Wow. A full color catalog. This is expensive to make. Now this is where I think uh, Lock and Load can do some things that perhaps others can't because I know that they print this sort of stuff. They can print in-house. They're doing all this in-house. They're doing their rule books and their charts and things in-house. What are they saying they have for sale? Okay, a lot of this stuff is out of print. Yeah, well, I guess they plan on getting it all back in stock, right? I hope they do. That is a really nice catalog. That is an expensive mofo. All right, let's check the maps out. I believe these, yeah, these are cardboard maps, so let me just get this over here. So now these have a little bit of a little bit of sheen to them. I've got the LED lights, so it's going to make it look more worse than it more worse, uh, more shiny than it is. But they are not super slick and slippery. It's a fairly decent thickness of uh, cardboard map. Very similar to the previous edition. One, two, except there's a third map in it. Yeah, and this must be the expansion map. Pretty cool, it's like a kind of satellite image, right? And you've got your turn markers around the side there. Broken orders down here. Movement points, whatever, right? And now the count is, let's see. So straight up, let's zoom in here a little bit. That's gonna probably be a little bit grainy for you guys, but uh, everything looks really well aligned. It's a bit, you know, I'm still not convinced this big gap is a good idea, but that's fine. Nice and easy to read, good, nice font. A little nod to Mark Walker with the goofy World at War font. These are all cut and aligned correctly. Let's see what sort of thickness they are. And they're a pretty decent thickness too. Let's punch one of these bad boys out. Yep, that's a nice, that's a nice standard thickness. I would say it's you know, equivalent if you're gonna use GMT as a measure. It's a GMT cut, and you just saw how easy that popped out too, right? No side nibs this time. Hey, no side nibs, what do you know? Nice. Well, this is really nice. Um, so 176 counters. You can see this, all the special attack counters down the bottom there, the blue ones. And they've got the packed ones up the top. I don't know if you can see that. There. Wow, uh, I tell you what, if this is a harbinger, harb, harbinger, harbinger of things to come, if that's what Heroes of the Pacific is gonna be like, I am gonna be really, really excited. Well done guys, I think that's an awesome, an awesome uh, first effort here. Well done, all right, later.